It's your boy Bezo, man. We back at it again with another one. If y'all new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, man. We climbing. My bad, it's three in the morning. We back at it again. Yesterday was a super efficient day. We primed two cars in one day, and then we painted this deck lid. And it came out great. As y'all knew, as y'all remembered, we did the jams and we did the outside of the car. Then I had to do the top of the hood and then the top of the deck lid. Now, I sprayed them separately because I realized I had pinholes in it, just had minor imperfections, so I just went ahead and shot the car. Took my chances by painting those two areas, which was the deck lid and the hood, separately, and I got lucky. It came out really great. Um, the colors matched right on, but most cases, that does not happen. So if you have to spray candy, spray all the pieces. You do not want that headache of, you know, dealing with issues like that. Anyway, got the money, Carlo. Got it all primed down. Now we got it primed down. This is show us and this will reveal any any uh, cracks and deep scratches with it being primed down. So we're going to block it down probably with some 320. This bad boy, we got the 67. Money, uh, I was about to say money, Carlo. <laughs> Damn, the disrespect. We got the 67 Mustang. This bad boy has been primed down now. Reason you prime it is one, it, it, it prevents the rust. Two, um, it gives you room to work with when you when it has like minor imperfections. So um, you're just building layer. You're building pretty much layers to cover up certain imperfections, and so you can smooth it out. And it will reveal um, any low spots or high spots like this right here. Like, so now that the car came in, we can see, we can see the dents. There we go. See all those dents. So when I block it, it's, it's easy to find, it's easy to deal with. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, now I went ahead and primed this one because I was already priming that one. So now I'm like, I'm aware, okay, bet, bet, bet. You can call it waste and primer, but me, I already know where all my dents are. So I'm just gonna block the whole thing and just glaze the top. Now some of them I can pull out, but some of them are very minor. So you might as well just wipe the whole thing. Trunk, probably have to do the same thing. It's not as bad as the hood. But anyways, yes, got it all primed, got that primed, but we're focusing on the 67 Mustang. This is going candy blue with some white pearl stripes. We got to bust this in and out. Um, there's some minor imperfect. This, this car, I was going to say, and it's crazy because now I got to let him know. But when he dropped this car off, he's asking me like, man, out of all the old schools pretty much that he had, is this the best one? Absolutely. This was the best one that I've had any old school that, well, yeah, yeah, I, that I can think of. Now, if you dropped your car off and you had an old school and it was in flawless condition, my bad, because I can't remember. But by the, just just off the off the dome, this was definitely the best car that I've had, the best conditioned old school car, especially for this year um, that I've had dropped off and I had to do hardly any body work. There's just a ton of minor imperfections. Um, it was a lot of paint chipping areas, which was in the jams, really just the jams, the, the deck, the back area in the trunk. And then the two car, the, you know, the jams the, for the doors. That's it. That's what we're working on right now. Now they're pretty rough though. That's the thing there. And then right here. So I minor, minor imperfections. I'm talking like this, like little cracks. We got another crack. We got this right here. We got a lot of paint chipping and peeling and stuff like that. We had to hand sand all in there so it's just these areas these pocket areas and then a few areas like this i'm gonna try and clean that up and then all in here all in here so um other than that everything else we had a few dents on both quarters no dents on the, uh, the front fenders this thing was this thing was sharp this thing was literally really smooth it had a few dents on the hood and then one dent on the deck lid and then the doors. Um, the door Now, the door was the worst. I will say the door, it just had a bunch of cracks in it, like if it was old Bondo. And that's exactly what happened. It just cracked out. All the Bondo cracked out. So, um, for the most part, man, this car just was pretty much A1. It wasn't, it wasn't, probably, it could probably um, use another day of just going over imperfection. And this thing is ready to seal. Well, we're going to just go ahead and paint it. Probably, probably prime the jams one more time. And then the rest, everything else, we're just 600 and painted. So 
Um, now, since we're talking about the old schools, there's a major difference between an old school car and a new, new old, newer car. Um, old school cars, man, you definitely got to take your time because they're old. You got cracks, you got minor dents, you got more rust, you know what I'm saying, versus a newer car. If you, you know, if I get this one and paint it, then I ain't really got to worry nowhere near as much as what I would have to worry about. Here, there's a major difference. It's ages, you know? So you never know what's under that, underneath that paint. And I'm not too sure. I could be wrong, but I think, I don't even think he knew that, that this car had got, you know, beat up before. It was... It was in rough condition, but whoever whoever previously painted it, they did you know they did a really good job on bodywork and stuff like that. But I've seen a lot of reds and yellows and blues, and and that's indicating that there was either bodywork in that specific area, or um, it had been primed and sealed, and it definitely got painted before for sure. Um, it wasn't the it, it might have been the original color, but it was painted painted twice, so it wasn't the factory color. So. Um, so yeah, I can I and I know that by just like I said, overspray in certain areas and just um the amount of layers and colors that there were on this car. So but this car is overall really, really slick and smooth for its year. But this one just took the place. This one got dropped off for a clear coat. This is the <laughs> this is flawless now. Like this ain't got a I don't see a dent, a ding, a scratch, or anything like that. I'm literally just gonna go ahead and re-clear it. So, uh, and we'll add some pearl to the clear coat. This thing is magnet. This thing is sharp. This is sharp. This is, yeah, I hate to, I hate to say it, my guy, but this one, now this one is like, this is perfect. Like, it ain't gotta, I ain't gotta do no dents, no deep scratches. I'm literally scuffing up the clear coat and then just reshooting the clear. So, I guess, I guess in a sense, that's still on the chart because I, this is, but this is technically like a full complete though. I don't know. I don't know. So these two, this this would have to come in first place. This would have to come in second place as far as just the amount of body work that I have to do. Because I have to do absolutely no body work. This thing is smooth. I had to I put it in here. And I hit the bump. I hit a bump up there and it just bounced all the way in here. This thing, I see why people have old school. I see this thing is nad. This is my favorite, man. I ain't gonna lie. Like, sharp, my guy. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Whew. So, we're gonna put like a little red. I think the pearl actually kind of matches the rag top. No, the stripe. So, it's got like a maroon reddish look to it. We're not gonna go heavy. We're not gonna go crazy with it. We don't wanna overdo it because look at, I mean, the, the originality. I think he got some wheels for it. So, bro is doing his thing. And it, this is actually the owner of the um, Candy candy Brandy Wine Tahoe that I did. So, definitely clutch for coming back. Definitely got to appreciate my guy. Um, so, yeah, man, this is a lot. This, we, got, we, got, we got some motion. Now, my brother, my cousins, they've been in and out helping me. They're not, I, I'm the only one full time here. I'm not looking for any employees just because just of finances and stuff like that. I got I to gotta make sure to fork down. You know, the Ford is, is, is good financially and stuff like that before I can even get anybody full time. But I really trying to get my brother. He was the one that was doing a lot of the body work on here. And my cousin was taking care of some engine based stuff on both cars. Um, they're in and out when they can, like on the weekends or early in the morning before they go to work. So your boy just trying to do his thing. Um, but for the most part, everything is going smooth. Um, we really, we definitely not. We don't have to take any cars anymore because, you know, find it, you know, just rent paid, og and &E paid, water bill paid, got a little extra pocket money for some supplies. So we're not really in a rush to take no more cars. We're going to get all these cars out. Um, and then uh, this, this when you see a lot of cars, this ensures that, okay, all right, bills is paid. So that's what we, that's what we're working on. So for the most part, man, everything going smooth. Now I do want to kind of, like I said, get on the get on the topic of taking the old school because I get a lot of people that are asked like, hey, man, when you deal, just a lot of questions when it comes to newer cars and older cars and stuff like that. Well, with an older car, you got to be damn near mentally prepared before you take an old school. And um, yeah, you really want to just take your time on it as well. Um, because like I said, when when you start getting that pressure of being rushed, you're just going to want to skip over shit. Every car that's ever been sent out, I want to say, 
And it's not it's not strictly because of the customer. It's either the customer or my financial situation. So you have to be really you have to think strategically before you even take an old school car. Like, how is your financial situation or how is your, you know, overall situation in general? Um, because it, it, it does take time. You might block a whole fender down and then come in the next day and, and it's like you didn't even block it down. It's almost wavy again. I've done that. I was dealing with that with the with the um the donk, the seventy four Caprice. Like I'd do some areas on the on the hood and then the fenders and then I'm like, Hell yeah, that shit feels smooth. Okay, cool. And then you come in the next day and then you just like, Man, I can't I can't believe I got that that fender smooth and you're like, the fuck is that? What Oh, no. Like, who came in here tampering with stuff? And then you got to ask yourself, like, was I drinking yesterday or was I? What was I? So, yeah, it's just like definitely, definitely got to be focused on it. It's time consuming. So you almost got to the shop has to kind of afford to take a old school. So um, this is just the fun part for me. I'm learning all of this. So definitely before you take a old school, you got to ask yourself, do you have the finances yes you're supposed to get paid for it and stuff like that but you never know i because i used to put myself in a hole by saying man i could get this old school out in probably like four weeks like i i, can, I know i can but the door might just might take a few days just because you working with shit underneath the paint you know what i'm saying and like this uh, like with the 74 caprice when we dropped it out when he got it dropped off Hell, he thought it was fun, and then I even thought it was fun. Like even just looking at it, like. But when I got to blocking it down and breaking underneath that, we don't know how much body work is underneath this this paint. <clears throat> we don't, because when this got dropped off, it damn near looked flawless. I almost asked him why do you want to get it painted, but when I you know sanded it down, blocked it down, actually observed the car. Observing the car is like looking for. Stuff like this, like little minor gashes, cleaning all of this up. This car does not have that. You see, it's clean. Uh, well, a little bit, but <laughs> clean. There's no paint chips or anything like that. I did not. I wasn't the one that painted this, but whoever laid it down laid it down really good. I, man, this this is deep. They had to put like five or six coats of this purple in here. So, um, but anyways, um, for the most part. Before you take an old school, you got to ask yourself, do you have the time, the patience? I'm talking like folding up the sandpaper and cleaning all of this up and then getting in deep in them grooves and back in here and all of that versus, you know, a newer car. You just taking a DA and you just buzzing over that one time. You're not necessarily focusing on these cracks. Man, I'm going to show you some pictures of how this was before we started sanding on it after the primer. But, um, yeah, anyway, so even with this primer down, we're going to block this. We'll block, we'll block. This doesn't need to be blocked. What we'll do is just buzz over with some 600 grit, this, these quarters and fenders and then the roof. Um, and then we'll hand sand up in there with like some 180 or some 320, get those deep scratches out. So, um, for the most part, man, this is what we're going to be doing today. We're going to roll all these cars out. And then um, I pretty much just got to go down the line. Now, honestly, out of all of, out of everything here, this will be the easiest one. Um, and then on this one with the 30s, we'll have to, uh, so I sprayed the gold, as y'all can see. All of this was chrome at first, but I sprayed the gold. The only thing left is the wheels. We have to spray the gold oh, on the wheels. Um, did the back back light. So yeah, man, um, spray the gold and then we're good. I got to find some taller jack stands. I don't even think my jack going to be able to lift this thing up. So um, every day something's getting worked on. Every day um, there's a change. There's a major difference. Um, I just got to move strategically um, for my customers, making sure my customers are happy, making sure they get their cars back on a, um, a reasonable time on top of uh, making sure my financial situation is uh, straight now. That's not a, that's not anyone else's problem, but I don't mind voicing my opinion and voicing some of the things that I go through, so you guys can avoid them, uh, the mistakes that I made. Uh, just as far as even running a body shop, gotta make sure your shop is running. Because if you ain't paying rent and they kick you out, then what? 
now they getting their cars back like this. <laughs> like, and that ain't gonna happen. So, um, yeah, man, for the most part, man, we having fun with it. I think my cousin just pulled up, so it's time to get to work. It's three in the morning. We're gonna continue to do our thing. Um, feel free to drop any questions, comments, or anything like that. But uh, I will pick back up later on today. And then, um, yeah, man, I'll show y'all some results. Y'all will be able to see the colors of each car before they leave. I'll probably either drop some pictures on my Instagram and stuff like that. Or um, do like little snippets, trying to maintain, the, you know, dropping the videos every other day without over stimulating myself. So um, overworking myself. So y'all hit that subscribe button, man. We're going to get up on out of here. I'll make sure y'all get an idea what this look like when it's all gold, man. We out of here. Appreciate it.